अगर that came up on yesterday's post was uh, about their pelvic floor descending when they activate their abs. And should the pelvic floor be lift? If they assume that their abdominal wall is working, do they assume the pelvic floor is lifting? And the answer is no. While there is a relationship that if we activate the abdominal wall, we do get a pelvic floor activation, if you know that that pelvic floor is bearing down in the opposite direction that we want to go, that could be the fact that you have a weak pelvic floor that is with strong abs, and those abs are overpowering the pelvic floor and dispersing pressure downward. Or it's your activation pattern, where again, you're not acting from the bottom up, and if you squeeze a balloon in the middle, the pressure goes down from the pelvic floor. And done consistently over time, um, that continues to weaken those muscles as well as disrupting their ability to coordinate naturally. So you can't always assume that. You need to know what it feels like to be activated. Baseline foundation, 
that an inhale and the exhale creates the lift if you've trained that. Now, you can have stronger abs than a pelvic floor in which the abs will overpower the pelvic floor and just because you're lifting your abs, you're not getting a pelvic floor lift with it and therefore you're getting the opposite and you're getting downward pressure. So, I don't want to say it's complicated. It is that reason why I am like so keen on like you have to understand some of this educational portion in your body and what's happening and you have to understand that foundation in order for it to go like this for you like you have to know when your pelvic floor is lifting so it really depends on where you're at in your journey like really like well, the way I see progressions going is these basic things are a lot and it's changing and it's reprogramming and then you get that integrated and it becomes part of your new movement pattern and then you step it up to a more challenging exercise like lunges and those sorts of things and you're learning how to integrate all of that system into that and then that becomes your next new normal and you don't have to think about it as much and then you take it to higher intensity jumping and you break those things down and you continue to do that just like learning anything in your life you start small it becomes easier you like add up right um, so I know there are some people who criticize this over emphasis on breath but to me if there wasn't a breakdown somewhere happening you wouldn't be having dysfunction. Um, and so it is really important to be purposeful about what you're doing at a certain point in time. And yes, it should progress. But I also like to think that I probably never knew what I was doing right in life until I was predisposed to this weakness from pregnancies. And then I had to learn. yesterday's post was uh, about their pelvic floor descending when they activate their abs and should the pelvic floor be lift if they assume that their abdominal wall is working do they assume the pelvic floor is lifting and the answer is no while there is a relationship that if we activate the abdominal wall we do get a pelvic floor activation if you know that that pelvic floor is bearing down in the opposite direction that we want to go that could be the fact that you have a weak pelvic floor that is with strong abs and those abs are overpowering the pelvic floor and dispersing pressure downward or it's your activation pattern where again you're not acting from the bottom up and if you squeeze a balloon in the middle the pressure goes down from the pelvic floor and done consistently over time um, that continues to weaken those muscles as well as disrupting their ability to coordinate naturally so you can't always assume that you need to know what it feels like to be activated. Okay. 